Amen. Also, I want to thank those that sent me those wonderful texts, word of encouragement. Thank you very much. Also, those that sent the seed, I got the seed. Amen. I received the seed. God bless you. It was very encouraging. Thank you very much. Also, for your prayers, for word of encouragement. That was good. That was really good. That was really good. And also the seed was good. But if you haven't given your seed, it's not too late. Amen. It's not late. It's not late at all. Amen. And as you do it, the Lord will bless you exceedingly and abundantly in Jesus' name. Also those that have given. I pray for one million percent overflow. Increase. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. Amen. Glory to God. For me, it was just another day. I was here this morning praying. I'm praying. I'm praying for some of you. As led by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Are you blessed today? I truly believe we are in a new season. I believe God is doing a new thing in this season. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. And we thank God for all the healings that are happening in this ministry. Glory to God. Don't, don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. Amen. So every service, we need to bring the sick. We need to bring the sick. Uh, last Sunday, Mother Adela gave testimony. She was healed of diabetes. Oh, my God. That is big. We thank God for that. Not even pre anymore. Everything is gone. Hallelujah. Our God is good. All the time. God is good. God is good. I have a message for you. It's kind of a long message. But we're going to do maybe in two parts or three parts. I truly believe in this new season. It should be a season of answer prayers. I, I, think, I truly believe it should be a season that when we pray, that our prayers are answered. Come on. I may not have been praying for a while, but I haven't received an answer. And you prayed and you prayed and you are still praying. Even some of you stop praying. You know? But today, I, I want to teach today. If you are making note, I think it will be good. It's going to help you how to get an answer prayer to all your prayers. Uh, this actually helped me myself in ministry. Amen. So I have to follow those steps and make sure that nothing, there's no obstacles. To stop my prayer. Amen. Also this has helped me in the past. That I pray for people. And they receive their healing. Their breakthrough instantaneously. I truly believe some of you are witness to this. Testimonies have been coming. Amen. But I want to teach this. So this can also help you. 
And the topic is the greatest obstacles to answer prayers. Please make note. I guarantee you, if you learn this and uh, you, 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 you follow the instruction that I'm going to give you, you're going to be surprised. As you pray, God will answer your prayers. Amen. The greatest obstacles to answer prayer. Let's go to Proverbs 15, 29. I will be teaching, please. Make notes. I love to impart knowledge. Is that okay? I love to impart knowledge. Knowledge is powerful. Amen. Now let's go to Proverbs 15, 29. Somebody is there, you can read for me. So we can make it a little interactive. Is that okay? Proverbs 15, 29. Also, those that are watching online, glory to God. Let's go to Proverbs 15, 29. It says, The Lord is far from the wicked. The Lord is far from the wicked. But he hears the prayers of the righteous. Hallelujah. Is far from the wicked. He doesn't associate with the wicked. But he hears the prayers of the righteous. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will answer your prayer. I pray that the Lord will hear your prayers because you are righteous. You are not wicked. Come on, somebody say amen to that. You are not wicked. You are righteous. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I am righteous because of what Christ has done on the cross. I am righteous and because I am righteous, the Lord will hear my prayers. Not only will hear my prayers, he will answer my prayer. This year is a year of manifestations in the name of Jesus Christ. But the Lord is far from the wicked. But hears the prayers of the righteous. Amen. Sometimes we pray and we pray and we even get frustrated praying because our prayers are not being answered. So today I'm going to be teaching. We're going to learn some of the obstacles that in dance our prayers. Glory to God. So from now on, our prayer will be answered. So even if you have your friend that is sick, you pray for them, they will be healed. If you have your neighbor that is sick, you pray for them, they will be healed. And they will be delivered. Because you are righteous. And God will answer your prayer. Can I hear amen to that? Come on, can I hear amen to that? Now, what? I'm going to give you a list. I will series. But what are the greatest obstacles for God to hear your prayer? Number one, offenses. That's the biggest. That's one of the bigger the bigger one. Offenses is a big one. Offenses. Be careful of offenses. You know what the Bible tells us? The Bible says offense must come. In other words, you cannot avoid it. Hallelujah. At home, offenses will happen. At school, offense will happen. At your job, offenses will happen. In the traffic, where you are driving, going home, offense is going to happen. There's no way you can escape it. If you run from it, it will follow you. And it will double cross you. So it's no time to run. We have to confront and learn how to overcome those offenses. That's number one. Offenses. Uh, even in church. Even today, I'm going to offend. Some people could be offended. But please forgive me. If we just mention the word offenses, some people say, okay, the pastor is talking about me now. I'm not talking about you. I'm just teaching. Please forgive me. Offenses must what? Must come. You remember the teaching on that? We did a teaching on that. The word offense is what? Scandalon. Can we say scandalon? Scandalon. It's a Greek word 
stand alone, it means what? Bait or trap. A bait or trap. So you have to have it in your mind. Any time offense is coming to you, the enemy wants to use it to trap you. It is a bait to trap you. Are you hear what I'm saying? Yes, we have to know that. So number one is offenses. Let's go to Mark 11, 25, 26. Mark 11, honest. I want from today on, if after this teaching, that your prayer be answered. Before you call, God will answer. While you are here speaking, God will hear. Hallelujah. Some Christians get frustrated that I pray and I pray and I pray. There is no answer. Father, what is going on? Everybody receiving breakthrough, but I'm not receiving anything. What have I done? Are you hearing me? Mark 11, 25, 26. Somebody's there. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. Whenever you what? You stand praying. He's talking about prayer. When you start praying, the first thing you do is to forgive anyone that have offended you. When you start praying, if you have anything against anyone, what do we do? We forgive them. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. It's very simple. If you don't forgive your neighbor, your friends, God will not forgive you. And if God don't forgive you, your prayer will not be answered. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you will forgive everybody. Even your school teacher, you forgive them. Even your co-worker, you forgive them. In the mighty name of Jesus, even your brother, you will forgive. Even your parents, you will forgive. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, even those that talk about you, you will forgive them. Because we are in a season of answer prayer. Even your husband, you will forgive. Even your wife, you will forgive. We have to forgive. We have no choice. Hallelujah. For answer prayer. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Even me, you will forgive. Come on, church. You will forgive. I'm not preaching about you. I'm preaching the gospel. Amen. This is very serious. Honest. This is very serious. Offense. Unforgiveness starts with offense. From offense, it goes to what? Resentment. From resentment, it goes to what? Unforgiveness. From unforgiveness, it goes to what? Bitterness. From bitterness, it goes to what? Hate. From hate, it goes to what? Unclean conscience. That's one of the reasons why believers' prayers are not being answered. Because a lot of people have offended us. And we hold on to it in our heart. Are you hear what I'm saying? I'm telling you, the moment you forgive, you don't need to even pray again. Because you've already prayed. Because you have already prayed, your prayer will be king to be answered. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm serious. You don't even need to pray again if you prayed before. Because those are obstacles. Amen. Amen, church. Jesus said something. He said, offenses must come. It is a must. We can't escape it. The only place you will not be offended is when you get to heaven. Everybody is perfect in heaven. The angels are perfect. We too, when we get there, we'll be perfect. But on earth, but on earth, we cannot, what? Escape it. I have learned how to deal with offense at the beginning of it before it gets to resentment or unforgiveness. I deal with people with understanding. I learned this from Jesus. Jesus said, forgive them, Father, because they don't know what they're doing. 
Jesus was dealing with them with understanding that they don't know what they are doing. They don't know who I am. If they know who Jesus was, they would not crucify him. Sometimes when you deal with people with understanding, what they're doing would not even bother you. Would not even bother you. Are you hear what I'm saying? Amen. So that's number one. Offenses against people, we must forgive them. Otherwise, God will not listen to our prayer. Come on, I many want God to listen to that prayer? Come on, I many want to pray for breakthrough and you receive instantaneous breakthrough? Come on, I many want to pray for the sick and they are healed? I many want to pray for deliverance and deliverance come? <laughs> Is it because God wants to answer our prayer? God wants to bless us. But when offense is there and we have unforgiveness, God will not forgive. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will listen to your prayers. Okay, only two amen. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will listen to your prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Even Jesus himself teaches us that we must forgive others. Amen. So number two. Let's go to James 4, 3. James 4, 3. James 4, 3. He said, you ask and you do, do not receive. Because you ask a miss. That you may spend it in your pleasure. Number two. Wrong motive and intentions. Wrong motive and wrong intentions. When we stand praying, not only we have to forgive any, everyone, but also we must have a right motives. We must have Right intentions. Right intention. The reason why you are praying. Why are you praying? Right motive, not wrong motive. Sometimes the answer to our prayer are delayed because we have wrong motive. It's the law of delay. Because the motive is not right. According to the passage, he says, if our prayer are what? Selfish and our intention are wrong. Amen. The church is very quiet. Selfish. If our prayer are what? Selfish and our intention are wrong. God will not answer them. We pray incorrectly when we pray to please our conveniences. We have to pray with the right motive. Glory to God. What are you praying for? What is the reason of what you want from God? Because we know that prayer acknowledges that the answer so it is beyond human understanding. So when we are asking God, what is the reason? Amen. Even the baby saying amen. Amen. What is the motive? What is the reason? Amen. Is it to bring glory to God? Is it to bring honor to God? Hallelujah. Is it to bring soul to the kingdom of God? Or we just want it for our self day? Let's check our motive. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. amen. Come on, church. Say amen. amen. Right motive. Glory to God. Right motive. Let's go to number three. Let's go to Romans 8 1. Are we there? 
Romans 8, 4. He said, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Number three, a guilty conscience. Ah, please, so for you, I will write it down. Guilty conscience. What does that mean? I will explain. Guilt, guilt often comes when we feel condemnation. When we feel condemned, you don't go into prayer already condemned. That's what the Bible says. There is therefore now, now, now that we are saved, now that we are Christ Jesus, right now that we are walking uprightly with God, there is no condemnation. Hallelujah. Sometimes the enemy likes to bring condemnation to us. To demoralize us. Condemnation will bring doubt. Hallelujah. But there's no condemnation. When we come to God, when we go to God, we have to go to the throne of God with boldness. Hallelujah. With boldness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are not a beggar. You are not a slave. You are a son and daughter of the Most High God. Everything that belongs to your father belongs to you. So I'm not coming to beg, but I'm coming to take my blessing. No condemnation. Don't feel guilty of the sin of yesterday. Oh man, I'm talking to somebody. Don't feel guilty of what happened five years ago. All things are passed away. All things are new. We are righteousness of God. We are righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All things are passing away. Amen. We are now in the newness of life. There's no condemnation. Hallelujah. This is your season of blessing. This is your season. Oh God of heaven, of more than enough. Don't feel condemned. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you. Oh God, I thank you. There's no condemnation to those that in Christ Jesus. The enemy will use it against you. Amen. When I go to God, I go boldly. Hallelujah. I go with the spirit of expectation. Hallelujah. Some of you hear me when I pray. I pray with boldness. I pray with confidence. I pray with authority. I pray with someone that has dominion. I don't pray like a beggar. God, if it is your will. No, it is his will. I already know his will. Come on, can I talk to you? Some of you don't know the will of God before you go. You must know the will of God before you go. I know the will of God. I know God wants to bless you. I know it's your season of manifestation. I know that the anointing of God upon your life. I know that God wants to heal you. I know that God wants to deliver you. So I don't go to ask God maybe. Or if it is your will. I already know his will. I already spent time in prayers. I pray. They will tell you. Today I pray. For four hours, I'm praying, I'm praying. In prayer, I've already known the will of God. When I come to the open, uh, open is a seat. Oh God, let me teach. Let me teach, I won't preach. Oh God, hallelujah. Come on, don't allow guilt. Amen, guilty conscience or condemnation. Are you in Christ Jesus? There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. I promise you, when you follow this man's teaching, you will see you pray, breakthrough begin to happen. Miracle begin to happen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you hearing me? These are prerequisite to prayer. Amen? Prerequisite before you pray. 
Number four. Let's go to Isaiah 59 verse 2. If I get here today, we're going to talk how to pray right pray. Ah, glory to God. Somebody read it for me? Okay, I'm going to read. He said, but your iniquity have separated you from your God. And your sin have hidden his faith from you, so that he will not hear you. Another reason, another thing that in that prayer, obstacle in prayer is sin and iniquity. Sins and iniquity. Quick, what is iniquity? Iniquity is anything that is crooked, twisted, contaminated, or impure. It also is a moral perverse and a state of mixture. Also, it also means sins of generation. Bloodline sin. Are you hearing me? Bloodline. Sins in the bloodline. Amen. Amen. Very simple. What we need to do is to do what? Ask for forgiveness. First John 1 9. Amen. If we confess our he is faithful and to forgive us our and from all unrighteousness. Amen. He cleanses us when we confess. Amen. Also, iniquity. The Bible makes us understand in Isaiah 53 that Jesus was what? Bruce. Jesus was what? For our. That means Jesus paid the price for our iniquity. Amen. The sins of the forefather, father. The sin in the bloodline. He was bruised for it. Amen. There's two types of bruises. The inner bruise and the outward bruise. Because you can be bleeding from inside. Amen. So Jesus paid the price for both. He was bruised. Amen. You can be bruised internally, and you can be bruised externally. Amen. Even in deliverance, I know that's why sometimes when, when I rebuke those demons, when they are speaking to me, they're so dumb. They are so dumb. I'm serious. I was in Abuja. When we started that church in Abuja, I show you guys the video, right? Yeah, you guys remember the video. I showed the video. And, and uh, we are doing the, we want to start the church on a Sunday, so we are doing revival. Three days of revival, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And the Sunday, we do installation, ordain the pastor, and uh, the church will move forward. So, during the revival, I was praying for, you know, God was healing, and uh, you can be healed, the deliverance, you know. So, but this lady came to the altar, I laid my hands on this lady, and the spirit began to speak. The spirit, the demon possessed a vocal cord and begin to speak to her. And the demon tell me, I will not let her go. And remember, I didn't say, don't touch us with hands. <laughs> I, I didn't say anything. I just do what? I lay what? I, you know what Jesus said? He said, if I cast that demon with the finger of God, that means the kingdom of God has come upon you. If I lay hands on you, that means the kingdom of God has come. Any other kingdom must confess. And any other kingdom must leave that place. Are you sure what I'm saying? Because the greatest kingdom we always stand. I'm telling you, the greatest kingdom we always stand. So I lay hand, the spirit begin to speak. I say, oh, oh. So begin to speak. Say, I will not let her go. I say, why? He said, because, look at him. He said, if I let her go, she will, she will get everybody saved in the family. She said, I will not let her go. Then I said, who are you? Then the demon speak, spoke. He said, I am a, a sensual bloodline. I said, I'm going somewhere. Yeah, go. He said, I'm here. He said, I'm a sensual. He said, I enter the household 
true idol worship. That's not even. Jesus said something is not supposed to tell me. He said what? Say it again. I what? Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. Okay, I'm not. You don't get it. It was what? Bruce. How many type of bruises? Two. One that is all huh? And one that is. So the demon said, I enter. I said, oh, oh. So I know we are dealing with the demon, the bruises within, not the one upon. No, you didn't get it. No, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. Let me stop deliverance. Let me stop deliverance. So Jesus was what? Bruised for our iniquity. Amen. Now, this is what I like. What is the solution to this obstacle? Please, if you are making notes, make a note. Make a note. Very simple. Because of what Christ has done, what are the solutions? What is the solution to these obstacles? I have given you the obstacles. Now, I have to give you, ah, what is the solution? How do you overcome it? Pray from the position of righteousness. Pray from the position of righteousness. This means to be in right standing with God. Right standing with what? With God. If you are not in right standing with God, you will hear your prayer. If it didn't come from the position of prayer, position of righteousness. Amen. It means to be in right standing with God. That means all your sins are what? Are forgiven. That means you have right motive. You have right intention. That means there's no sin. That means there's no iniquity. Are you hearing me? That means you are in the right standing. I guarantee you, when you are in the right standing and you pray, God will answer you speedily. He will answer you quickly. Are you hearing me? Now, it means to be in the right standing with God. A righteous person is not perfect. I thought I know to hear a right amen. Oh, because I say you are righteous, that doesn't mean you are perfect. None of us is perfect. <laughs> no, none of us will be perfect. It is impossible for you to be perfect. You cannot be perfect, but you can be righteous and not perfect. Oh no, you will be safe. You'll be safe. I say you can be righteous and no one and not perfect. Amen. If you are in Christ Jesus, if you stand uprightly, you are righteous, but you are not perfect. The blood of Jesus cover you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited that I am righteous. Even though I'm not perfect, but I am righteous. <laughs> Is, that's what we call positional truth. I am in Christ Jesus. He is inside of me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. A righteous person is not perfect. It simply means you are aligned with God. You are what? Aligned with God. Hallelujah. Even though I'm not perfect, I am aligned with God. God will make everything perfect. But I am righteous. Amen. That's why he imputes righteousness. The word justification is not by works, but is by what to be accounted righteous. Amen. Oh, I love that. To be what? Accounted righteous. Not by your works. Not by your ability, not by your intellect, not by your money, not by your big house or big car. Are you hearing me? Oh, God. Are you with me? 
It means to be what? Aligned with God. How many here are aligned with God? Amen. To be aligned with God is powerful. That means your, your level of right standing with God will determine your prayer will be answered. Please write this down. Your right standing, your level of right standing with God will determine your prayers being answered. If you are aligned with God, oh, I can go a little deeper, church, can I? If you are what? Aligned with God, you can never pray amiss. If you are what? Aligned with God. What does that mean to be aligned with God? Come on, talk to me now. To be aligned with God. Aligned. <laughs> that means you and God are one. To be aligned. You connected to God. You cannot pray a means because if you are aligned with God, you know the will of God. You know the right thing to pray. And you know what not to pray because you are aligned with God. Can I hear amen? Come on, how many are aligned with God? Come on, how many are aligned with God? That's what I do when I pray for people. You see them come give testimony. Diabetes is gone. Cancer is gone. Are you not saying? Breakthrough is happening. You know why? Not me, not by mind, not by power, but I am aligned with God. When you are aligned with God, God also gives you information. He gives you prayer. He tells you how to pray. He tells you what to pray for. He tells you what not to pray for. Oh God, you cannot pray amiss. Oh God, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Sometimes when I pray for people, even if I pray amiss, guess what happened? Guess what happened? Even though I'm praying, I'm praying for the prayer to go. I'm not eating it. I'm not eating it. Guess what happened? Because you are aligned with God, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost will take over. The Bible says we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit. But the Spirit. Come on, come on, talk to me. But the Spirit. But the Spirit. Maybe I'm praying wrong prayer for that miracle. But the Holy Spirit will kick in. In other words, when it happens, I know he feels my weaknesses. He carries the burden of my weaknesses. And he wants to help me and pray the will of God. Because sometimes we do not know what we need to. But the Spirit. Are you with me? Somebody go there quick. Romans 8. 26, 27. You will see it. When you are aligned with God, that's what happens. Only ghosts will kick in. Only ghosts will take over. Many times I pray for people, I just begin to pray the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not, oh, you didn't get me. I'm not praying it willingly. I'm praying English. Holy Spirit, take over and change my English to the tongue of men and the tongue of angel. And he begin to pray. And he begin to pray. If you in a line, somebody read that for me quick. And I'm going to stop quick. But I need to give you this. I need to give you this. Uh huh. Oh no, even in pharmacy, in church, we have a lot of young people, they won't understand, they think you, we are sick. <laughs> Anybody have New King James? In pharmacy, I think that one infirmity be weaknesses. I know we know some of some people don't know, they say infirmity. In New King James. And the spirit helps us with our what? 
Our weaknesses. Our weaknesses. You know what that means? Sometimes there's a way we need to pray a certain prayer. But we might not be praying it right. Because the spirit will do what? It will kick in. It will possess our what? Protocol. And begin to what? To pray the right prayer. And present it to the Father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And present it to the Father. If you are in alignment with God, align with God, that will happen. Amen? Amen. Let's move quick. Benefit of a position of righteousness. Please write it down. A position of righteousness. A position of righteousness. Mind you, I'm not saying you are perfect. Amen, church? Position, but you are righteous in Christ Jesus, but not perfect. All right. Now, let's talk about the benefit of a position of righteousness. Quick, let's go to Psalms 34, 15. Oh, I love that scripture. Can we put it on the screen? I want us to meditate this scripture. Oh, my God. Sound? Can we put it on the screen? Psalm 34, 15. Put it on the screen. He said, the eyes of the law are on the righteous. Thank you. Can we read it together, church? One, two, three, read. Did you see that? One more time. Can we read one more time? Read. In the position of a what? Righteous. The eyes of the Lord is upon you. The eyes of what? Of the Lord is upon you. Not only is high, also you will get his ears. Even his ears are open to hear what you have to say. Hallelujah. That's why when we pray, we pray in from the what? From the position of what? Have you said that? Pray from the position of what? Pray from the position of what? Amen. If you are not in the position of righteousness, don't pray yet. Amen. If you are upset, don't pray yet. If you are angry, don't pray yet. Amen. Make sure you clear all those things. So you want to be what? In the position of righteousness. Where all your sins are forgiven. Your intentions are right. You are in the right standing with God. Guess what? God is looking at you. Not only he's looking at you. You have his ears. He said his ears are open to their cry. I pray in the name of Jesus that God here will be open to your cry. All your prayer, the Lord will hear it. Amen? Now, what are the benefits of a position of righteousness? Number one, righteousness we always have the hairs of God. Righteousness we always have what? The hairs of God. Righteousness, we always have the hands of God. If you are not in that position, don't pray yet. When you get to that position, guess what? His eyes are on the righteous. He's looking at you. Hallelujah. And his ears are what? Attentive or open. So your cry. Amen. Next one. The area that are right with God, we have the attention of God. Oh my God. The areas that are right with God, 
we have the attention of God. Whatever area of your life is right with God, you will have the attention of God. Whatever area is not right, no attention. Amen. If you want God high to be looking at you, make sure you are in a position of what? Righteousness. That's why before I pray, I make sure I am right. I am not angry. I am not offended. And no offense is in me. I, I want to be in that position of righteousness. When you are there, God is looking at you. You have his attention. Some people are crying, God, give me. God, <laughs> say, God, give me. God, give me. I want this. I want that. He's not looking at them because they are not in the right position. They are not in the right position. But when you are in the right position, that's why the Bible says that in Isaiah 65, 24, he said, before you call, before you call, I will answer. Can we go there quick? Um, Isaiah 65, 24. Because he's paying attention. Before you even open your mouth, he's answering. You got his attention. His ears are open to hear your cry. I said to myself, you know, I said to my wife, these people don't know all the people that are messing with me, lying against me. I haven't prayed yet. <laughs> I haven't prayed yet. I'm a kind of person, I don't pray against people. If I open my mind and I pray, it will come to pass. I've never prayed. I've never prayed. You know, I'm not going to pray against them because I know what will happen. God will answer. Because it's highs. <laughs> his eyes are on the righteous and his ears are open wide. Whatever I say, he will take it and it will come to pass. But I said, nah, I'm not going to do that. Nah, I'm too much, more mature than that to be a foolish person. They're immature. They're immature. Amen. Even offenses, can I quit with this? Offenses actually prove that you are spiritually mature. Offenses? When they offended you, they offend you, and it didn't bother you, it proves that you are spiritually mature. That's why God will allow offense. Stop running for offense. God use offense to text you. Are you even mature? See, remember, I told you, God don't call us because we are perfect. He call us because we are spiritually mature. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at Jesus. They beat him. They knock him down. They offended him. They put thorns on his head. They kick him. He get up. They nail him on the cross. They pass him. Forgive them. Spiritual maturity. He said, Father, forgive them. But they don't know what they are doing. Are you hear what I'm saying? Oh God, I, I got to go. No. God will allow offenses in your life. Amen. God will allow what? offenses in your life. God will allow people to talk about you and see how you're going to deal with it. Then when you see me, I come on the pulpit, I preach the word. Not that there's no offense. Not that they're not attacking me. Not that the devil is not doing shakala everything. No. I'm mature. <laughs> I heard them say, I am mature in the spirit. That's what God is looking for. Are you hear them saying maturity? Amen. Amen. But when you see some people, all they do is cry. Uh, 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 uh. Stop crying. Baby cries. Uh, maturity. You don't cry. You can take pain. Your level of tolerance should be high. Level of tolerance to pain. Uh, continue to do the work of the Lord. Uh, regardless of pain. Uh, regardless of trials. Uh, regardless of tribulation. Regardless of what they are saying. Uh, you preach the gospel. You pray for the saint. Uh, oh God. 
Oh God, thank you. Maturity. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Spiritual maturity. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Are you still with me? The area that are right with God we have attention of God. Examine yourself. See which area of your life is right with God. You will see the hands of God in that area. The area that is not right, don't condemn it. Work on it. Remember, we are not perfect. But we are righteous. Because we are what? Alignment. To be in alignment with God is to fulfill all righteousness, to obey God, to do the things of God. Amen. Let me move quick. Oh, God. So remember number one, benefit of position of righteousness. Please write it down. Don't pray when you are not in the position of righteousness. You're wasting your time. Can I tell you the truth? I'm going to tell you the truth. I am called to speak the truth. Amen. I'm not I am appointed. So you can fire me. Hello. I'm not ayas. You didn't hire me. I'm appointed and ordained by God. So I'll speak the truth. I am called to speak the truth. Don't waste your time. Do that time. To get the area that's not right with God to be right. And you want to be in a what? A position of righteousness. I'm telling you, your prayers will be answered. Man, the devil is going to be upset with you. If you're in the position of righteousness, you can't attack him. You will try. God will lift up the standard. And you try. God will lift up the standard. Because you're in the position of Come on, say that. Position of? Now, what are the benefits? Righteousness always have the what? The head of? Number two, the area that are right with God. We have the attention of? The area of your life that are right with God. With what? Have the attention of? Of God, the area that are not right, work on it and get it what right. Amen. Amen. All right. Also, likewise, the area you align with God are the area you will see prayer answer. Area that you align with God, that's the area you will see answer quickly. Now let's talk about this quick. Actually, I'm gonna finish this today. So Sunday we I believe I have a message for you Sunday. Oh my god, I truly believe so. How do you know that? She's she saw the flyer. Sean, Sean probably said, Sean, 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 show her the flyer. Actually, actually, the message, oh man, Sean, share, give it to her. Because I just sent the flyer already, I already prepared the message. She, she's in the spirit, she's aligned with God. Hey, this woman, be careful, man. And, 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 and the flyer says, Transition by fire. Remember, we've been teaching on the new season. New season, transition by fire. Some people, they need the fire to transit. All right, that's for Sunday. Transition by fire. Now, peace to see prayer answer. Please write it down. Peace. I'm going to give it quick, then we'll finish with this. Peace, singing, to singing, prayers, answer. Remember 4 John 1, 9? 
if we confess our, he is faithful and to forgive us our and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. P, to make it, to see answer prayer, number one, return to righteousness. Return to righteousness. He's just talking about the same thing, position of righteousness. You want to come back to the position of righteousness. P to righteousness. Also, check your heart, motives, and intention. Please. Very important. Check your heart, motives, and intention. Very important. Our heart condition is very important. The reason why we are praying is, is it for our own motive, selfish reason? Amen. Very important. Number three, be obedient and forgive. Be obedient and forgive. In one of these days, again, I'm going to teach, come back and teach the consequences. It's a book I'm putting together. Uh, it's on editing right now. The consequences of unforgiveness or the burden of unforgiveness. The consequences of unforgiveness. If I tell you it's about 10, you're going to be shocked. You're going to be surprised. The consequences. One of it, if you don't forgive, that means the devil have an head start over you. Head start. Also, one of it also, if you don't forgive, that means your offering will not be received. One of it, maybe I should stop. One of it, unforgiveness diminish the love of God. <laughs> unforgiveness. Because both come from the same, they cannot come from the same well. Either you are loving or you have unforgiveness. Both cannot come on at the same time. Even if you try to fake it, you will be revealed. <laughs> All right. Very important. Be obedient and what? And forgive. The next one be in right standing and align with God. Be in right standing and align with God. Confess and repent the sins and iniquities. It's very simple. That's it. Confess. I have some activation. I don't know if we have time. Amen. Let, let us stand. Fifth one, confess and repent to sin and iniquity. Let me go over it again one more time because it's very important. The P to sing prayer answer. Number one, return to righteousness. Return to righteousness. Number two, check your heart motives and intention. Number three, be obedient and forgive. Be in right standing and align with God. Confess and repent of sin and iniquity. I'm going to give you an assignment for next son, next Friday. Are you ready? Amen. I don't think I have time to do activation. I have some activation that I'm going to do and I'm going to drop and bring to you, but we will do it another time. Thank you on your own assignment. 
write down three prayer points you've been praying for for a while. Three prayer points that you've been praying, you've been praying to God for a while, it's not yet answered. You can write it down one, two, three. Or if you, if you have faith, you can make it seven. Write them down. Please, we're going to do some kind of an experiment here to see how God will answer your prayer. It's three, you've been asking, you've been asking, you've been asking, but nothing is happening. Three or seven. Then follow this teaching, return to righteousness. In other words, be in the position of righteousness. Ask for forgiveness, ask God to forgive. But before you ask God to forgive, make sure you forgive others. You have that prayer, return to righteousness, check your heart, motive, and intention. Make sure your motive, motives and intentions are right. Amen. Next one, be in right standing and align with God. If there's any sin, ask for forgiveness and repent for the sin and iniquity. Now, if you see iniquities, you know what to do, right? If you see iniquities, what you do, ask for forgiveness on your father's bloodline. And ask for forgiveness on your mother's world bloodline. After you do that, then come, that means you are back in where? The position of righteousness. Then those prayer points begin to pray and ask God. Amen. Begin to pray. Take it before God again. That means now you are what? In the position of. And what the Bible says, the book of Psalms that we just read. The eyes of the Lord is what? On the righteous. Maybe God's height is right here before. When you are righteous, guess what? Not only the eyes. I was open. I'm telling you, your prayer will be answered. One, God will hear your prayer. Amen. Now, one is for prayer to be heard. Another is for prayer to be answered. Amen. I'm talking about the hearing and answer. First, God will hear it. Some prayer to be seasonal. Answer. Be for now, are you with, with, with me? So then, after you've done this, then you pray. Question for me that's it. Also, watch the indulgences, offenses. You have them, offenses, right motive, and intention. Number three. Guilt, guilty conscience, that means no condemnation, sins and iniquity. That's it. When you are in a position of righteousness, then begin to pray. God will hear your prayer and God will answer your prayer. If it's not then, God will speak to you through dream or through someone that your prayer has been heard and it will be answered. In Jesus' name, can we say amen? Come on church, can we say amen? Amen. Let's stand on our feet. Let's start on our feet. I won't, I don't have time. I wanted to do this with you. There's some activation that I have here. Some more activation that I have. Amen. Is anyone here want to give their life to Jesus? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let me see your hands. I want to pray for you. If you want to... Uh, you dedicate your life to Christ. I want to pray for you. Anyone here? Anyone? Everybody saved, sanctified. Very good. Very good. Amen. 
Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Let us go before God. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to forgive me of my sin. Any known sin or unknown sin, I ask you in the name of Jesus to forgive me. Your word said, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. Known sin and unknown sin. Blot out my transgression. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I also ask for forgiveness. For my father bloodline. I ask Lord to forgive. And I ask Lord to have mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of the sins of my, of my mother's side. Forgive the sins of my mother's side. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. So now I renounce to the spirit of iniquity. I renounce to the spirit of iniquity. I renounce Spirit of perversion, I renounce. Spirit of condemnation, I renounce. Spirit of offenses, I renounce. Rebellion spirit, I renounce. Spirit of stubbornness, arrogance, pride, I renounce them in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare I am free from iniquity in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare with my mouth, I am now right in right standing. I am now in right standing with God. I am in right standing with God. Right now, I stand in a position of righteousness. Come on, say it loud. I stand, I stand, I stand in a position of righteousness. I'm standing in a position of righteousness. My sins have been forgiven. My iniquities have been forgiven. I have renounced spirit of iniquity. I have renounced perverse spirit. I have renounced spirit of contamination. I have renounced spirit of offense. I have renounced rebellion spirit. I have renounced spirit of stubbornness. I have renounced spirit of arrogance. I have renounced spirit of pride. I declare myself free of iniquity. So I declare with my mouth, I am now in right standing. I am in right standing. I am in right standing with God. With God. Now, say now, I am standing in a position of righteousness. I am standing in a position of righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare with my mouth that all my prayers will be heard and answered. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I bless you that all my prayers will be answered because, because I am standing in the position of righteousness, of righteousness. And the Bible says that the highest of the law is upon the righteous. I am righteous. I am not perfect, but I am righteous. I am pursuing, I am pursuing perfection. I am pursuing perfection and I am righteous in Christ Jesus. So Heavenly Father, now I know that your ears are open to my cries. Your ears are open to my prayer. So Heavenly Father, I thank you. I bless you. I exalt your name 
In Jesus' name. Come on, church. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him praise. In Jesus' name. From the position of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But I still want you to do the assignment. I'm serious about this. Do the assignment. Make sure you follow the steps. Forgive everybody. Make the right motive, right intention. No condemnations for sins and iniquity. And pray those prayers. You will see. It works. Come on. Can we give God praise and glory? Can we give God praise and glory? Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. You will see as you are in the position of righteousness, you pray for your friends, they will be healed. Amen. Amen. You don't need to come to me. Amen. I say you don't need to come to me. You get to the position of righteousness, things will begin to happen. Healing. Boom. Even time to come, you won't lay hands. You just speak it. Holy Spirit will do it. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give him praise. Yeah. Come on, somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody give him praise. I don't know about you, but I ate well tonight. Oh, glory to God. Amen. 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 It just means agreement. I agree. I'm in agreement. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. I'm in agreement. Hallelujah. With, with, with what was spoken. I have ingested it. Oh my God. It's in my reservoir. Oh my, 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 my. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Your worship continues as we give unto the Lord. People, this is my God, phenomenal soil. This is phenomenal soil. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Amen. I thank God for the two M, for the two coppers, right? A third one, a fourth one. This is phenomenal soil. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Like I said, the worship continues as we uh, give unto the Lord. This soil in here is good. It's great. It's phenomenal. Amen. Anyone need an envelope? We have a hand here and a hand back here. Glory to God. We have two hands here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm, Glory to God. God is doing in our midst. He's been given invention. He spoke it. And he's been given invention. Somebody called me and said, God, God gave me a new good idea. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And then somebody else said, wow, I got an amazing idea. Amen. Glory to God. And then somebody, and God gave me also an amazing idea. I want to share it like, wow. Why didn't somebody else thought of it? Amen. Because it wasn't for them. Amen. He said he's going to give back. My God. Hallelujah. He's going to what? Ted? Oh my God. What's the scripture? He said until it will eventually get to us, somebody help me. What's the scripture, Pastor Reggie? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I, I can't think of it, but it's going to come back to me. Uh, uh, amen. Glory to God. Can you stand with me, please? Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Lots of ideas and inventions and things like that. Be on the lookout. Don't, don't take anything for Don't take anything lightly, people. God is giving ideas like, like what? There's a friend of mine many, many years ago. I think was Diamond. Was that a one lady? I don't remember. But um, Beverly, and she is a, um, a patent lawyer. 
and she fell out the same number. Glory to God. Call her up about a year ago, and she still has the loan and the exact same number, but now she's a patent lawyer for the government. She doesn't have a private practice, but she says, if you need a patent lawyer, I can refer you to one that's going to take care of you. Amen. And we're going to need one. We're going to need one. Amen. Glory to God. Simple something. Something simple. God breathed on it. And it becomes a hassle word. Amen. Amen. So like I was saying, this in here is good soil. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. The ways to give are, uh, uh, is um, on the screen through Cash App, Everlasting Life CC, through the website, everlastinglife.org, forward slash give, through PayPal, um, and Zell, it's finance at everlastinglife.org. Amen? Amen. What a good word, people. What a good word. Glory to God. Aligning us with the, to, to receive answered prayer, that we won't get it wrong and wondering, why is my prayer is being, is, why is not answering what's going on? Glory to God. Like I said, this is meat, meaty word. Amen. If you didn't take notes, ask somebody to take notes. We all need this. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the, yes, ma'am. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Please follow the direction of Sister Rhea. Smoke give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes, he is worthy, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good, oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is
amazing way to help the church as I was saying last night that that And also we save too. And also we save too. Amen. Very well, very well, very well. Um, 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 you know, I was just last week I just um Jessica passed by here. It's something that we want to do with the, the, the flooring in, in the church, but this is precious. Amen. Glory to God. But we we, we believe that as you save, uh, and I love what they call it, uh, save. Is it serve and save? You serve. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The house of God. And you save. Can't beat that, people. Glory to God. I was sharing it with some pastors. Hallelujah. And they love it. They absolutely love it. Amen. Amen. You serve. Glory to God. And you turn around and you save. I've been saying it's win-win. Win-win. Amen. So, Mr. Wings will be outside. If you have any questions, glory to God. He's right there. And if you have your... Many people have their um their utility bills online these days, so it, it, that's how you sign up and you save, amen, and you serve, amen. Glory to God. And if you don't have a utility bill, you can still you word them out. You can share it with others, amen. It's a way to bless. Glory to God. The kingdom of God is a way to give back. Hallelujah. And it's a way to serve, amen. Glory to God and save, amen, amen. Glory to God. Bow your heads with me, please. Father, we honor you. We give you glory, praise, and adoration. God, I, I, I keep on thanking you for the word. I keep on thanking you for the word. Oh, my God. Teach us your way, O oh Lord, and lead us in a straight, in a straight path, in a plain path. Glory to God. Amen. Your word is life to those who find it. Your word bring life to your bones. My God. To our bones. My God. Lord, you strengthen us this day. Oh God, you teach us. There's, there's, not a, there's no part of our life that you're not interested in. And I know you brought this word today. My God, so we we'll can get it right in our prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus. Fathers, we're about to depart from this place, but not from your presence. Now may the, the, the may the May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forever. And the saints of God say, Amen, Amen.